Hello everyone. So first I want to thank Professor Sakakui's kind invitations and it's my honor to be to be here to give this talk. And today I want to talk about the final and element method by patch reconstruction. Uh, this is a joint work with Professor Li and Professor Ming and Professor Yang. Uh, I'm in Sun Chu from Peking University. I'm a postdoc. Okay. This, uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I want to introduce the motivation of our method, and then we will spend most of the time to uh, describe the approximation space we used. The, because the major difference is that we construct a new uh, approximation space that is different from the conforming fine element method and the discontinued Galaxy method. Uh, first, uh, the, the we want to introduce the interpolation process, and uh, uh, from the interpolation process, uh, we can get the basis function from uh, of our space. And uh, um, uh, for the theoretical analysis, the approximation error must be an analysis. So there, there is some uh, conditions for the error is estimate, and uh, then we can use this. Uh, uh, space to solve the elliptic equations, and uh, uh, because uh, there is some discontinuous of the space, we uh, must use the DG scheme to uh, 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 to get the variational formulations, and uh, uh, then we give some numerical uh, test to verify our theoretical analysis. Then we we uh, compare our method to find an element method and the GT method and to try to uh, insulate uh, something. And uh, fi finally, I give some conclusions and the discussions. And uh, the, the final element method definitely is one of the most successful method in numerical particle, particle differential equations. But there are some limitations of the traditional final element method because, um, 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 for example, the, the, the um, Euro grid, um, so some situations are common used, uh, such as the ERT, you, the human body, you may partition the human body into the polygonal and the polyhedral mesh or will be much more suitable. And, uh, but th this is very hard to construct the, the element factor, the basis factor on such a geometry. Mm, and uh, for the final element method, the, also the, in the, the FEM also requires a high quality mesh, and uh, which must be triangle, quadrilateral in two dimensional, and uh, tetrahedron in three dimensional. And uh, there is also a problem that high order method is also preferred, but uh, in practice, a high order method is not a common use. Um, for example, in there is uh, many softwares for finite element method, but uh, all all the softwares only provide. Uh, as high as uh, P3 elements. Uh, there is no P4 or P, P5 elements. And uh, if uh, we abandon some, dis um, uh, abandon some continuous constraints, that uh, uh, we, we can allow the different uh, geome geometries that uh, was the discontinued Galaxy's advantages. And uh, the, because the, if we abandon the, if we allow the different geometry, since there is no continuity on the agendas of uh, the elements, and uh, it's easy to implement the, the implementation in practice, and uh, and uh, it it can handle the hanging out and uh, other problems. But uh, there is one issue for that this continuous Galaxy method is that uh, DD method is. The, the degree of freedom for DG method is increasingly remarkable in the high order approximations. So our our idea is straightforward. So if can we find a method that uh, also can enjoy the geometry flex, flexibilities, and meanwhile we can um, have the high efficiency with some appropriate degree of freedom for the linear systems. So the, our, goal, the, our goal is to develop a uniform framework to various geometries, and uh, we want to propose a high order method uh, with appropriate linear system. So our idea is straightforward and enlightened by the patch reconstruction technique in the finite volume method. We construct a new, new finite element space that can satisfy the 
the girls we wanted. So um, before we introduce the space, I first of all would like to introduce how our interpolation process was done. Um, before the interpolation, we need some okay. Uh, with some notations, uh, first a uh, bounded uh, domain is needed. It can be when you one dimensional, two dimensional, or three dimensional. And uh, a partition is allowed, uh, is demanded, and uh, it allowed the polygonal and polyhedral partitions. And uh, the and the the, the the mesh size is h, and the element numbers is n. And uh, our interpolation basically basically based on two factors: the collocation point and the element path. And for every element, we pick up one point in the element, uh, usually in the very centers. Uh, oh, what's wrong? Okay. Uh, uh, usually, the very center for the collocation point, but uh, the, the, it's, uh, no, no, it can be more flexible in the practice. And uh, so, for every element, we pick up one point. So we get a set is ith is is number of number of the set is n. And uh, for every element, we pick up uh, some ele element around this element to consist an uh, element patch. And uh, the element patch, the, the element patch. Here is the two dimensional examples. Uh, there is a square domain which partitioned to the triangle or the quadrilateral mesh, mixed mesh. And for, the, oh, oh, for this element K, we take the very center as the collection point. And then we pick up the, uh, here, we want to construct the both order uh, polynomials to approximation, approximate the fractions. So we, we need the uh, first order polynomial need 5 15 degrees of freedoms. Here we pick up uh, 22 elements to consist the element patch. So the element patch is 22 elements, and in every element, in er, every element in the element patch is, um, is and there is a, a collection point. Then we, we do the interpolation process in the element patch. So here is the mathematical describes. Uh, so uh, our interpolation function, interpolated function, is a piecewise constant function that is uh, a piecewise constant on every element. And uh, so he also okay, uh, is in a piecewise constant space associated with the partitions. And uh, so we construct the high order polynomial by the least square pro process. <laughs> Is that we we uh, think that based uh, based based on uh, this square approximation on the uh, collocation point, and uh, then we we get a uh, we get a uh, formula on entire the uh, entire the element patch, but but we uh, just restrict on the uh, current element and abandon other informations on the entire element patch. So. Okay. So the, here we insulate in insulate in explain this idea by a one D examples. Here we want to do an interpolation process on the zero one intervals. So we uh, divided the, the interval into five uh, five uniform mesh, which is donated by K one, K two, K and K three, K four, K five, and. Uh, for every element, we pick up the middle center as the collection point, and we want to do a linear approximation in the, uh, the in in this interval, in the linear interpolation, and, and uh, in one D, the linear interpolation needs uh, two degree of freedom. So we set our um, uh, size of the page is three, and uh, so this is how the element path choose. The, for K1, the right hand side, or the, the left hand side, we choose the K1, K2, K3 as its element part. And the K, for K5, we choose K3, K4, K5 for its element part. And for the element in the inter, inter point, inter mm -hmm. element, so we pick up the left, left element, uh, element itself and the right element as uh, its element part. And if we want to approximate the same types on the entire uh, on the 
uh, interval, uh, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 is uh, in element K3, and uh, so the element part is K2, K3, K4, and we do the interpolation process in the element part. SK3, and then we get a linear interpolation. This uh, here is because the symmetric of the sign pairs is uh, look like a uh, constant, but it's a linear linear function, linear approximation for these functions. And then, okay, there is a linear function on the entire element part. Then we restrict on the current element and append other information for this phenomenon. So we, we get a linear interpolation on K3. Then we do this process element element by element, and we get a linear interpolation for sine pi x on the entire interval. So th this is how our interpolation was done, and in two dimensional and three dimensional, all the same. So we just pick the uh, collection point and the element part. We okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for that. So how can so we can see uh, the, the process is based on the interpolated functions, but how can we get the basic functions for our uh, the space? The, so the basic function is some uh, complex, but uh, so if we want to uh, express our interpolation function in the in the in this way, we can uh, we want to express like the finite element method or GT method is the is the summation of the UI and uh, times uh, lambda i for the the, the interpolation functions. Um, so the basic function is not straightforward. It's uh, uh, it's the uh, interpolation operator effect on uh, uh, functions that uh, is uh, which is unit vector value functions which is, oh, is equal to 1 on the current element and equal to 0 on other element. So if, the, if we define these uh, uh, functions, okay. uh, if we define these functions and uh, so our interpolation process defined on uh, the yeah, defined, uh, uh, previous with the interpolation operator effect on the, uh, the, these functions, we can get our uh, uh, basis functions. So um, just as, as I mentioned that we also use these 1D problems as the examples and the, the, the minimum for dating are the, uh, the same from in the previous and we want to get the linear approximation for our functions. So uh, here is the basis functions uh, look like. Uh, uh, from top down is number one, number two, and number three, number five. Uh, you can see that it um, sometimes is continuous, but sometimes it's discontinuous on the element phase. Uh, we will explain it later. And, uh, and so the, for the, the, the elements, uh, for the uh, support of the basis function, it's, uh, it's also related to the element part, but they are, they are two are not equal to each other. So the element, these basic functions you know, can explain how our interpolation was done in the every element. For the, the, for the element K1, the interpolation function are determined by the, by the lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, the three basic functions. And for the, the, in the K2, it is also determined by these three the, the basis functions, uh, but for element the K3, K3, we just showed that it's determined by the number two, number three, number four, those three 
and basic inspections. And uh, for two dimensional case, we we uh, then, uh, uh, give this example of a square domain, which is partitioned into you know, quasi uniform triangle mesh. And we also take uh, the very center as the collection point. And uh, here we want to do the quadratic approximations. So the the, the degree of freedom is six in two dimensional, and we take our element part size as nine. And here is an uh, uh, element part example for one element and uh, the base, basic function corresponding to this element. So you, you so the element part is size is nine and you can see that this, this those two are not equal to each other. Um, and uh, for the, for this one, uh, the, this uh, the, the, this element is contained in the element part, but uh, it is not uh, contained in the support of the uh, basis function of this element. So, what what's the relation of those two? The the the, the, uh, the, the relation is not straightforward, but uh, okay, if uh, the current element is located in the element part of the the, the other element, so the, base, the the support of the basis function is not not equal, equal to zero in this element. So, for exa this example, this element, is, this element is okay. This element is not located in this element's element's part. So there is no no there. Is, so this element cannot affect the interpolation process. On the on the this element, so this basis function is equal to zero. So the, the so we want to do some remark about our basis functions. First of all, the basis functions of the, the support of the basis functions are not equal to the element part, although they have some internal relations to 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 each other, and uh, the. Okay, the discontinuous of the basic functions, we can see that uh, even for the two dimensional case, uh, it's not uh, continuous along the element uh, element base. And uh, for the one dimensional case, the, the discontinuous comes from that different element part. If the, the, this is continuous because K1, K2 has the same element parts. So you, you, you can imagine, you can, cannot get a different polynomial if you use the same element part. But for the K2 and K3, the, those um, element parts are different to each other. So you cannot get the same, uh, same polynomials. So there is a, a discontinuous gen generate. So, so in the, it's in one dimensional, it's easy to get the same element part, but in high, dimen high dimensional, it's, not, uh, it's impossible to get the same element part. For uh, for the adjacent element, and uh, the third one is annoying. That is that we cannot guarantee that our basis function is uh, is uh, the, the the span of our basis function is equal to the uh, piecewise constant space. You know, for example, in the one D problems, uh, you you can recall in the one D problems, if you take the Element patch for the element for every element is as k1, k2, k3, k4, k5. On the entire for the all the element in the interval, and you want to construct a linear approximations. So the linear approximation just has two degree of freedoms, but now you have five degree of freedoms. So there is three degree of freedoms appears or disappears. So the so the the the, the Space is become the uh, the dimension of space is equal to equal to two now. So the, the so the, this is our interpolation pro inter, inter, the, the space we can reconstruct may the dimension of may be uh, less than the piecewise constant space. But uh, the, the, this is not common in the high dimensional because the high dimensional is complex. complex. And in in one dimensional, if you if you uh, not choose the element part as the that is extremely way, uh, this can be avoided. And uh, yeah, so the, here is the 
the irreducible may say that we need some uh, uh, shadow regularity conditions for the, um, the uh, partitions. All, the, all those conditions say that that thing that the polygonal mesh you use, you it can be divided into a, a triangle or quadrilateral mesh, uh, which are also sharp regularity in the uh, in the, the sense of carried or CR sense. So the, the, the so the, the shape of the triangle or, or quadrilateral you. Partition, it's uh, sometimes it's uh, regular, and th this regular assumption is needed by some uh, useful inequality, such uh, such as uh, um, inequality, approximation property, and uh, inverse inequalities. And uh, we also need some assumptions about the. Uh, uh, existence and the uniqueness of our list the square process because um, the, the, uh, all this assumption says that all the collection points you use in the current Allen path is cannot. Oh, so wrong. Okay, sorry for that. Um, why? Okay, uh, then the, uh, the, this assumption is says that all the collection points you use in the atom path cannot located in the zero point of a uh, specified uh, polynomial. You, you, if you, you, you can imagine if all the collection points you use in, is in a zero point of the polynomial, so you cannot reconstruct that polynomial in an pro appropriate way. So it's uh, easy to uh, uh, achieve these uh, assumptions and uh, to satisfy these assumptions in one dimensional. But in high dimensional, the zero point of uh, some uh, polynomial is not easy to uh, uh, to get. So the the, the, the uh, in compute computational the, this assumption always satisfied. So it's not that lucky you can get all the zero point of the uh, polynomial. And uh, so the, the, the error is estimated about the approximation is determined by the Lebesgue constant. The, the, uh, here is our definition of the Lebesgue constant of uh, our approximations. So it's the, the, the radio about the L infinity norm to the function value and the L infinity norm to on the uh, collection point. All the, all the things that we said is the factor value can be controlled on the value of the collection point. So if the assumption A satisfied, the constant is less than infinity. And the next, the next question is how, um, okay, um, is how to control this constant. And the, 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 the the quantity estimate is done by the Professor Li and Professor Ming in um, 2012. And the, the, the assumption is need the Allen part to be convex. But it's, uh, it's impossible in practice because uh, all the examples we show that the, the Allen part we use are not uh, convex. But, uh, but this, uh, uh, this estimate can be shared if we use the finite element stocks property. For the uh, which use the, in the mimic finite difference method, and all these things is said is that if the element part is containing a coin, uh, and the constant of the uh, the Lebesgue constant can be controlled by this coin, and uh, this is said uh, said the same thing of the shape regularity conditions. So in 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 some sense, the the um, the, um, the non-convex is allowed, but you cannot some 
um, you post long convex in the element patch, so the, the shape of the patch must be regular. So the, the constant can be controlled by the property of the coin contained in the element patch. And so if the constant is controlled and we have the some, some, um, some property for the um, interpolation operators. So first is environment properties. If you, 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 if your operator effect on a polynomial that uh, m orders, then you can get you can get the same uh, interpolation function for the, the polynomial. The the m order polynomial is invariant and the operators and uh, the stability property is straightforward. The uh, interpolation function can the norm of the or infinity can be controlled by the point value in the collection point. And the, the, the three is the three one is the optimal approximation. Is that our approximation is in some meanings that equal to the best the uh, polynomial approximation in the polynomial space. All this is need for the error estimate in this theorem that we can um, give the error estimate of our approximation errors that we which is the same as the finite element method and the EG method that for the L2 norm it has uh, m, m plus one order convergence and for the uh, H1 semi norm it has H uh, uh, has m order convergence. And uh, all, all, but uh, the only difference is that we we not only depend on the mesh size edge and we also depend on the diameter of the patch element patch we use. And uh, okay, we get our uh, finite element space, so we can solve the elliptic equation on this space. Uh, the, uh, here we just uh, focus on a single uh, Laplace equations with Dirichlet boundary, boundary conditions, and uh, the discrete variational problem is find find uh, the uh, solution on the our element space, uh, finite element space. So the uh, you. Uh, because our element space is discontinuous, we, we must borrow some uh, uh, common user scheme in the DG method. Here we use the interdependent discontinuous Gagarin scheme. The square the bracket, oh, sorry. The square bracket uh, donates the jump of the uh, element phase, and the brace donates the average of the um, element phase. And uh, here the penalty term must give and uh, and uh, here is the penalty for the jumps of the, the, um, the basis functions and the, the linear over the the Dirichlet boundary condition is imposed by and is imposed weakly. And uh, in, by defining the following energy norm, this energy norm is some, in some meanings is equal to the H one norm in the in the, the continuous case, and uh, we can give if we choose the penalty term not enough, so the bilinear form can guarantee the stability and the boundedness. Uh, so uh, we can get the following error estimate, which depends on the mesh size and the, um, uh, the diameter of the patch size, uh, element patch. So the, this uh, estimate is just uh, equal to the, 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 the uh, traditional case that uh, L2 not has uh, M plus 1 convergence orders and L in genome has M convergence orders. Then we give some numerical examples to verify our, our uh, theoretical analysis. Here is, uh, we saw the two, di two dimensional Laplace equations and uh, oh, also we can adopt uh, many other uh, boundary conditions. Here we use the Newman boundary conditions, and uh, it's a smooth solution. And we use the common, uh, common, common triangle and uh, quadrilateral mesh, and uh, is generated by the software shear mesh. And there is uh, the mesh and the refined mesh in the case. 
Here is the convergence uh, result for the triangle map. Uh, and uh, from top down, e, top to down is the different order approximation. And the different order finite element space used to solve the, the, those equations, we can see the euro order can much more, more and more sharper in, the, in some sense. And uh, this uh, uh, statism is coincide with the element, uh, the theoretical analysis we give that uh, in the L2 norm has M plus one convergence orders, and in any norm it has M order convergence orders. And uh, this, uh, this is a result for quadrilateral mesh, and uh, which also coincides with the num numerical estimate that L2 has M plus one convergence orders, and uh, 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 energy norm, norm has MO convergence orders. And here is some um, um, polygonal mesh uh, examples that here we also saw the smooth, smooth functions that, uh, and the, the, this example is a bunch of mark problem from the mimic, uh, mimic finite difference method, which use the uh, hexagon partitions and uh, the, 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 the hexagon mesh is twist and uh, some giving functions. So here is the mesh we use. And the, the convergence order is the same. Is, is the same and uh, it has uh, M plus one convergence order in L2 norm and uh, M, M convergence order in N, the energy norm. And here is an example for the non smooth case. Uh, the, 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 and the, 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 the commutation computational domain is the L shaft, and uh, this function has a singularity in the in the zero point of the mesh. And uh, for the conforming finite element method, uh, uh, the convergence uh, order is uh, two third you know, minus epsilon and uh, and uh, for the H1 norm and uh, for the L2 norm is four third minus epsilon for any epsilon equal to uh, greater than zero. And uh, this is, is a mesh we used, uh, which is generated by the uh, poly, uh, poly mesh algorithm. And uh, here is uh, the numerical result. We can see all the a convergence order for different uh, old, old, uh, plumbing approximation are the same, which is two uh, the four third in L2 norm and uh, two third in the uh, energy norm. And uh, so uh, we want to compare our method to with the finite element method and uh, the DT method. So in the, in the, if our method is comparable with those two methods, and it depends on the uh, constancy in the uh, numerical estimations. And uh, so we compare, our, compare the three methods under the same uh, uniform triangle mesh. And here is the numerical result. And here is for the x coordinate is the degree of freedoms for the entire systems. This is the degree of freedoms, and for the y coordinate is the numerical errors for uh, for the different norms. Here is the L2 norm. And then right hand side is the L2 norm, and the, the left hand side is the H1 semi norm because we uh, we only can calculate the uh, H1 semi norm in uh, three different methods. And uh, w what does the figure mean? It means that if we plot a straight line in this, we can see that okay, the, the blue line is the finite element method and the dashed line is our method and the, the solid line is the DT method. So if we plot a straight line here, we can see the, the finite element method about achieve the achieve this accuracy about in just a need about one one hundred degree of freedoms, but our method achieves this accuracy 
but need one thousand degree of freedoms, and uh, or the the DG method is the same, need about one thousand degree of freedoms. So the, the, the this means that all the line is uh, on, on near the Z, it, that method is better. It can achieve the high order with lower degree of freedoms, le with less degree of freedoms. So this is how they mean. So the one order approximation we can our method and the DG method is uh, much worse than the conforming finite element method. But so the, but all but all the convergence orders are the same. So then it has uh, say, uh, it has second convergence order in the L two norm and the, uh, the first convergence order in the H one semi norms. And here is the second order approximation. So we can see our method sometimes sometimes can comparable with the finite element method. We can achieve the same order with the same degree of freedom in L2 norm norm. And uh, it is better also better. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. So in the second order approximation, and we can see in H1 seminar, we in slightly better than the finite element method. It means that we can achieve the high order accuracy with less degree of freedoms. And here is the example, here is the example for the third order approximations. We can see in the L2 norms, our, better, our method is also slightly better than the final error method. But in H1 semi norms, our method is worse than the final element method. So we, we can see from all the examples that our method is always better than that. This can be gravity method, but uh, for the elliptic uh, equations, the, the conforming finite method may be much more suitable for the elliptic equations because it's uh, conforming approximations. It's uh, the, just because the conforming finite element is uh, belong to the H1 space. So here is the conclusions. Um, so by the patch reconstruction, when the process we build a new finite element space, this space can um, be applied on the various geometries of the mesh, and uh, the, 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 the method can achieve the high order approximation by the piecewise constant degree of freedoms. And uh, so th there is uh, still some work needed to do in the future. First of all, is uh, constructing space. Constructing space. The, there is some thing we need to more study, to future study about the constructing space, and uh, so there is some future applications for the finite element method. So on the, to other equations, and uh, for some linear equations on the nonlinear nonlinear equations. Oh, okay. Thank you, and. Uh, So I can also show uh, examples for our um, based on the uh, FE pack as a professor Lee. So in our method, it's just uh, easy to give the um, to achieve different order approximations for uh, for for the example. In this example, we uh, you okay. We give the first order approximations, and uh, the element part is in two dimensional. The element part is choose as four. 
we just give the parameters, and uh, the computer is very computational, is done very fast, and uh, we can give other, for example, six uh, order approximations with. Okay. Okay. So on, we just done the first order approximation and calculate that the calculator is very fast and it's convenient to change different order of approximations. If we give the first and the second order approximations and choose the patch size as nine, and it can be done very quick. And uh, for our method, it's very convenient to kind of have different uh, uh, plumbing orders, which uh, cannot can be done in the finite element method and the DG method. If we just uh, give the parameter in different senses, if we give the approximation orders and the element size, this can be done very easily. Okay, thank you.